How's it going, everybody? It's your boy, Can't Do Ken. Um, don't mind the room. I'm moving, so all this stuff is going to be packed up and put somewhere out of the way. I'm switching rooms and everything, so don't worry about that. But um, I just wanted to make a video kind of talking about something that's been going crazy in like the Honkai Star Rail community lately. The tier lists have been called into question, and... I had to go take a look for myself, right? And I'm sitting here looking at it, and I do think that they're, the tier lists are kind of wonky right now. Like, I don't think, um, I don't think they're all the way accurate or fair or like realistic, you know? Like, especially like the way some of the characters are, are tiered, I feel is kind of flawed in a couple ways. So we're gonna get into that um this should be pretty fun uh if you don't agree or if you do agree tell me down below how do you what do you think like was i wrong was were my takes too hot were they spicy was was i right on the money let me know let's get it so already right i'm looking at s plus only right here and already i'm seeing some problems for the most part i would say amplifier and sustain look fine to me i think these are like accurate but when we go over to damage dealer, I already got a call. Daniel and Jing Liu, that's already cap. All right. That's cap. The only reason or the only way I would let them slide being in S plus with Acheron is that one is ice and one's imaginary and Acheron isn't those elements. But like other than that, I, I don't think this is right at all. I, Acura, like, I, so, so far, right, throughout my Honkai Star Rail journey, I have not lost a 50-50 for, like, nothing, like, light cones, characters, nothing, like, I have not lost a 50-50, right, so, I have Acheron, Daniel, Dr. Ratio, Zila, uh, Kafka, I do have... Ching she, but I, I don't use her obviously but like i've got like a good like oh and topaz and i have topaz so i've got like the majority of these characters i have on my account and they're pretty built so if we um if we come take a look so acheron i'm running speed boots so it's 60 over 168 but um usually i use the attack boot and it puts me at 63 over 180, which is pretty disgusting. But obviously, like I said, I've been running speed boots just to get like an extra couple of turns so I can like get an extra debuff, an extra alt here and there, that kind of thing. Um, so who is it? Acheron, Kafka, Topaz, 60, 66 over 171. That's really close to my Acheron traces acheron's 10 10 topaz is like 8 8 6 kafka like the important traces i do have pretty leveled zila 10 across the board she's just 10 10 10 10 she's 77 out of 163 so in the on average my characters are all in the same area daniel he lacking i'm not gonna lie daniel's lacking so y'all might y'all might catch me slipping when it comes to like my evaluation of Daniel, because I just I could not get good artifacts for him. Um, maybe if he had better artifacts, I wouldn't say what I'm about to say about him. But um, from my where I'm standing, he's just not the man, bro. I, I can definitely see like I may be wrong. But he may be the man, but like for me, 69 over 119, he not doing it. Maybe I need better artifacts, but uh. Who else? I think that's it. I think that's that's all the five star characters that I have, right? And I'm gonna let you know. I've been clearing MOC ten since maybe like the fourth one, maybe? Like before they added twelve. And I've been clearing twelve since the last patch. So I pretty much it always comes down to or it used to come down for before Acheron came out. It used to come down to Daniel being on one side and Zila being on the other side. Or 
sometimes Kafka, like it was rough. It was rough. I'm not going to lie. Cle getting clears before Acheron was crazy rough. It was ridiculous. But um, I was making it work. It usually came down to Daniel and someone else putting in work, right? And life has never been as easy as it is now that Acheron is out. Acheron trivializes everything. I've I've had uh, I think this MOC 12 was like imaginary on the top, electric on the bottom. And like my Daniel team, like I forget how it went down. My basically my Daniel team couldn't clear the imaginary floor because like Daniel has so many problems. He's skill point hungry and there's like nobody in the game that besides like Sparkle who can give him the skill points he needs. Or if you have like Ron May and her light cone, like some like like some sort of outside force giving him like feeding him skill points and energy. Like he has to have Tingyu and he has to have extra skill points coming from somewhere. And it's just like it's so much like it's so not realistic to just like have that at all times. Like sometimes Tingyun has to be on the other side. Sometimes like sometimes I don't have like now because like my thing now is I, I run Ron May with him because it increases break efficiency which even if I have to lose um so in that scenario right I would lose like a debuffer I would lose Pella or you know Silver Wolf or whatever if the type weakness type doesn't match I would bring Silver Wolf but I drop her and i bring ron may and it still works out because we daniel's pretty much doing all of the break damage by himself but with ting yun battering his all and he you know he's dropping his all and he's doing the enhanced basic attack he it pretty much feels like i have an entire team jumping on the enemy and like it's just without these things like if i didn't have ron may I mean, I, there was a time I didn't have her, and like, it was rough. It was really rough. It was it was awful. It was really bad because I would have Daniel. The enemy would be weak to imaginary. I'd have Daniel, and even if like th they're also weak to lightning, right? Ting Yun normal attacks twice in a in a turn, and then like that's not doing anything to the toughness meter and then the enemies are just active the entire fight like they're not getting broken they're like it, it was just bad bro like and it baffles me to see that they have daniel in the same tier as acheron i ran acheron against her her toughness type it was i ran acheron on the imaginary and i ran a kafka team on the electric or lightning and she just trivialized it like it, no other character in the game is doing that no other character is doing that not at not on moc 12 not when the enemies outscale you by like a ridiculous amount when their defense is higher than yours like their defense resists most of your damage and if your toughness type is not correct then it's just worse like no one does that Acheron is the single only character you could run on any side of the, the the MOC and she will win like she will win she will come out on top and she'll break the toughness meters which is crazy like it just that right there I, the second I opened this tier list and I saw Acheron was on the same tier as anyone else I, it's just like nah there literally needs to be a, a god tier or something because that's that no Jing Liu and Daniel are not on Acheron's level like not by a long shot like in terms of quality of life as well Acheron having those overflow stacks and when she um if an enemy with the the marks dies they automatically shift over to the next enemy or if like you clear the wave if you have nine stacks on the field and all these enemies die the stacks go over to another enemy on the next side of the f like that's quality of life that doesn't exist with other characters it just doesn't like it, it just doesn't exist like kafka does more damage like she sets off dots right and the more dots an enemy has the the more damage they take from her skill right 
but if that enemy dies the dots are gone you now have to rebuild that like it just doesn't exist for other people if you're if you're playing freaking daniel and the enemy die or the enemy doesn't die and they they hang on with enough damp or with enough hp to survive like an enhanced basic attack again you, i mean you're down three skill points and like the, you don't get those back you're down three skill points you have no burst you have no ultimate you're you just at a loss like no one has the amount of quality of life that Acheron has in the game period like without maybe some supports but like dps wise not a single soul bro not a single soul you're playing topaz you numbi is like he's going to attack the enemy with one of her ultimate stacks right he's on one hp you're about to lose that ultimate stack like there's nothing you can do like you're about to use all that dps on an enemy who's about to die and that stack is gone like freaking himiko when she gets her break stacks it literally doesn't overflow so like because it doesn't overflow sometimes you just be building what would have been stacks but it's not there's no stacks you're at the cap and then she uses her one attack and that's it it's like i you just you can't get what acheron gives anywhere else from any other character it's just not a thing lightning lord not moving into the active like phase or the the active cycle how many of you jing yuan players have lost the moc because of that i know i've seen it happen to my friend he, he's a jing yuan stan and i i've seen multiple mocs where lightning lord just does not move into phase 20 or cycle 20 and because he just won't come into the next cycle you just lose because lightning lord doesn't pull up it's like stuff like that it's just that, that that all of that is a lack of quality of life for the character and like acheron suffers none of it like she is by far the best character in the game like the game was not as fun to me until i got her my very first dps i pulled was zila and i believed y'all know how if you've been here from the beginning you know how it was when zila came out people were saying she was a monster she breaks the game she's a game changer she gets multiple turns she does this she does that she'll do your 401k she'll file your w2 like that all of it bruh and like zila i'm I, bruh zila is ass i'm i'm not gonna lie to you bruh and you can't tell me she's not, bro. I've got her 10, 10, 10, bro. All skills, all traces, 10. Whole tree unlocked. Like, Zila is ass. 100% on a 1,000%. I had been struggling through multiple, many MOCs with this, <laughs> with this broken, high, high single target damage. Uh, no, what does it say in game, bro? This, this has made me mad since the game's been out where is it bro how do you pull it up so if you look at the descriptions for the pats right deals extraordinary amounts of single target damage bro i literally have clips upon clips of zilla's alt hitting for like 60k that is an ultimate that like bruh like 60k bruh barely able to break 100k like it like no i don't care what nobody says like i've suffered with zila i have i have stayed up countless nights struggling from from 10 p.m to like 10 a.m in the morning repeating mocs tr doing anything anything to get zila to to kill something and it, it it's not real bruh 77 over 163 and that's before buffs that's before fushuan gives her an extra 10 percent, putting her at 87 like bruh i have tried everything it is wild it is wild to me that zila is s tier like i man i And honestly, bro, it, it's crazy because this tier list has got me bent out of shape now. Because the fact that Jing Yuan, Zila is better than Jing Yuan. And the fact that Jing Yuan is in S tier with Zila is crazy, bro. Like, I. 
Bro, that junk, I don't know. That junk gonna be kind of twisted. Your boy a whole pretzel right now. I, hmm. And don't even get me started on the specialists, bro. I've been having like better luck recently with Kafka, but like I, y'all gonna hate me for saying this, but Kafka's ass too. It's like Kafka is not S plus. I I will put Kafka in a firm S spot. I, honestly, I'd put her in A. The, I think the only reason she's not in A on this tier list is because the people in A are as too. Like, I think that's the only reason they didn't put her in there. How many how many more spaces do they have? They got Trailblazer, Welt. They got Welt in here with a like below a bunch of four stars. Like that's crazy, bro. Like. But I, I think Kafka's not S plus. I Kafka not strong like that. Like Kafka is not good like that. She not strong like that. I have to believe that their assessment of Kafka has to come from their understanding of how some certain specific team functions. Like that I'm not like understanding. Maybe I don't have the team or whatever. But like I'm talking like from on a unit like this unit by themselves standpoint and i understand like it's hard to assess the unit by themselves because she's a dot character who specifically wants like dot teammates to set it so I, I understand like you can't really assess her truly on her own because like her on her own isn't the damage that she deals she deals all of our damage at the same time i, I get that but man i I, I don't agree with S plus Kafka. Like, I would not put the damage output or, like, the success rate of Kafka teams on the same level as, like, like anywhere near the same level as Acheron teams. I just, I wouldn't do it. I feel like there's some, like, I feel like that's disingenuous a little bit. Like... And I love Pride Win. I love Mr. Pokey, Pride Win, all that stuff. I'm not hating on them, but like I do feel like this tier list is crazy. This tier list is out of whack, bruh. I can't speak too much for um Dr. Ratio. People have been saying he's like nutty and he's broken and he's like top character in the game, but I'm like I've played Acheron, bro. Like I I've played Acheron. Like, you're not going to tell me anyone is better than this character. Because, like, you're not going to tell me you put Dr. Ratio in a in an MOC that's weak to lightning and he crushes it. You're not going to tell me that. I'm not believing it. If you show me it, you Adobe premiered that junk, bro. You premiere pro that. Because, <laughs> like, that's After Effects. You're not, like, I'm not believing it. I won't believe it. Acheron is the best character in the game, period. Like, no one comes close. When we come to supports, uh, I 100% can see this. Ron May, absolutely disgusting. Um, 10 out of 10 would recommend for every team, for every archetype, for every damage dealer. For every, Like, Ron May is broken. I think um, Sparkle is, like, a little more situational than that. Like, I think they're... Are time like you definitely wouldn't drop Sparkle into like a like a Kafka team, right? Like that's not like what she's for. She's for like traditional DPSs, but like I I don't think that takes away from anything that she does. I think she is also deserving of the S plus spot. Those extra skill points are disgusting. Um, the damage increases that she all the the stats that she gives, the damage bonuses, the crit damage, all that absolutely nutty it's awesome that it stays for more than one turn i just I honestly speaking i've been on the fence or not on the fence i've been kind of upset ever since sparkle released because i spent so much time trying to get bronya and like building bronya and now i kind of feel like i kind of feel like bronya's as high key i mean s plus is fair no one does what Branya does except sparkle now but like i i feel like p 
people's main thing is but Branya advances them 100% and uh sparkle advances them only 50% but that's not how that works it's not like it's not advancing them 50% on the list it's advancing them by 50% of their action value so like usually if the character is fast still they will like make it to the top like it it's not that like much of a difference like really when you like sparkle kind of just wins to be honest um and i kind of hate her for that i'm not gonna lie because I, I i put in so much work for Branya, y'all like and now i feel like i have to get sparkle because like my daniel team struggling for skill points constantly we don't ever have skill points we don't ever have skill points and i'm like i use ting yun for the attack bonus and to battery daniel but i'm like bro if i just had extra skill points i probably wouldn't even need a battery right like i just uh, let me see i'm curious let's just take a look real quick i want to see what the teams are if they do ron may at all yeah ron may sparkle but i, I can see why that wouldn't be a popular team over tingyun Tingyun Sparkle. Yeah. I feel that. I feel that. That's that's fair. I just man, I, I it, they make me feel like I need Sparkle now. I'll probably finish building my Daniel and then check with um see like you know, see how he clears and then see if I really like still need Sparkle, but like ah, that makes me so envious, bro. Like Everybody who got Sparkle, bro, I just, ooh, I just want to take her off y'all's accounts, bro. Um, but yeah, Silver Wolf, I think Silver Wolf kind of is a failure. Um, like, I think, I think Silver Wolf falls short, not because Silver Wolf is bad. Silver Wolf falls short because our premier quantum dps is ass which is zila who's ass i think that's what like because the problem is you're running silver wolf on a team right usually because you need defense reduction and and the enemy is not weak to quantum like that's usually like because because naturally silver wolf is a quantum character she like quantum is always in the, the the list of things she can apply to an enemy so naturally like the optimal silver wolf scenario is a raw quantum team so that takes out the rng and your dps is quantum and the enemies are not weak to you is like like you know the general use like why you would want a silver wolf on your account right but like zilla is so ass that it makes silver wolf then like feel like she has less value because if the enemies if if it's an imaginary enemy why would i go through the trouble of bringing mono quantum for zilla to just not kill them like like I brought Quantum or I brought Silver Wolf to implant Quantum and I brought Sela to come fight them when like she's not going to kill them. She's not going to deal no damage and she's going to splash like freaking Uga block on RuneScape and like it's just not going to do nothing to them. I could have just brought Daniel. Like I like I I could have just brought a dot team. A dot team probably would just clear it like like it's nothing. It's just like I don't know. I feel like Silver Wolf definitely loses value because of Zila. If we had a sick, like if we had a an Acheron level quantum DPS, bruh. Silver Wolf, boy, I'm telling you, all content creators everywhere would be telling you Silver Wolf is a must-have. She's a, a you you have to have her because our quantum carry is so broken that like you could take these two into any domain and they'll just kill everything like i promise you if 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 zilla was good everyone would be singing silver wolf's praises but like i just i feel like silver wolf goes so far down a drain because Zilla's ass bro 
you end up ha like not being able to use her because she's just like dookie butter and i have her light cone too like th that's what's so crazy about it that's why it makes me so mad these stats are amazing i think she has more attack than my acheron too yeah 3600 attack like 77.9 over 163.4 all traces maxed bro like i it makes me so mad when zila just doesn't do anything bro i was trying to clear mos or not moc i mean obviously i try to clear moc but i was trying to clear pure fiction bro and like bro zila splashing on like the little robot dogs in there it Bro, that junk is infuriating. I be having like Ron May buff on. Freaking I'll pull her in with Bronya so she gets the damage bonus. Cast Bronya's ultimate and then watch Zila just go in and splash the enemy. Like it's a dog. It's level 84 or 85. And like Zila will just splash on him for 60k and not kill him. It's like, bro, are you a five star? Like, she'd be hitting, like, Shu Yi. I expect Shu Yi to, like, do more damage than that. Especially with the signature light cone. It's just, it's sad, bro. It's sad. Please, let me know if you also feel the same about Zeal. Am I bugging? Or what? Because, like, for me, Zeal has disappointed me since day one. Since day one I pulled her, she has been a disappointment. And it's, I, I don't know what to do about that. I don't know how to fix that. That's on everything. That's on babies, bro. For sustain, I do have some interesting takes here because, um, oh, by the way, my fault. I meant to mention Ting Yun. Ting Yun, broken character. If you don't have Ting Yun leveled, level her. You're crazy if you don't. Even if you don't run her every MOC, there may be some, like, rare cases where you just don't run her. She's still, like, no one does what she does. She's broken. Five star level, four star, as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, run that. But, um, so sustain i got i got a hot take sort of the only sustains here that i own are fushuan because of mono quantum which was a freaking lie um gallagher lynx japard bailu and obviously natasha and march right um so from in my opinion don't lo don't even mess with Natasha. Um, people claim Bailu is good, but the the bounce on the heel in my book that's ass. Get that out of here. That's trash. Um, that's why Bailu never got used by me. I just the bounce like first she's like heavily dependent on skill point usage which is annoying and then like when you need a skill like when you like it's supposed to be like cost efficient right like each person that it bounces to gets like a lower percentage of the heal and but like th the idea is it bounces randomly and like preserves the need to use a skill point but oftentimes it'll bounce and splash someone twice or jump over the one that you need to like be cost efficient and heal it'll just jump over them and like oh well i guess i'm by losing next turn i'm using another skill point it's just like as far as i'm concerned by is ass bro i just by Lu's ass i've gotten much better mileage out of links for the longest time the way i've been running my mocs it's links on one half Fushuan on the other half, and then the rest of the teams, like whatever that is, Kafka team, Daniel team, Topaz, Zila, now Acheron, like whatever it is, is always Fushuan, Lynx, right? But, and that's why I, I do agree with Lynx being an A, okay? Because there are certain things that happen when you're playing a Lynx team that they kind of make you they kind of make you reassess the character like for instance the cleanse the team-wide cleanse so good so good but 
it being attached to the burst comes with its own downsides as well as the upsides like the upside everyone gets cleansed on a team that's great the downside is when you need it the most it vanishes like the avatar because you don't got your burst ready like that has ruined so many runs for me because like there's nothing you can do if if you already have like 14 like this newest um moc we fight sam right i was doing my regular fushuan and i had links on the sam side because like the thing about fushuan is everyone's getting dotted down fushuan just dies like she just folds so i was like okay links because i got the cleanse right but like the thing about links you can't cleanse like it only cleanses one debuff so like I'm assuming that means like one stack of whatever this is. So if you have like bleed, like 10 stacks of bleed and 10 stacks of burn, the 10 stacks of bleed gone, right? 10 stacks of burn stay on you. So like the thing is you're taking so much dot that like you cleanse one and then like you're still taking insane dot damage. Like you are still getting hurt and like your burst is not ready now and then everyone's just getting dotted down so now you're spamming skill points trying to get people to stay alive and it, it just it didn't work and then like the whole thing about lynx is her she was supposed to be like a like a true sustain because when she heals someone it applies continuous healing and this continuous healing is supposed to be like the way you're supposed to think about it is like it being like buffer healing so Lynx can basic attack and it'll like hold you over until like she gets her next burst but the thing is it's dependent on the character themselves getting a turn that's what where it, it like becomes ass because like you got a team of four and you're all like on low hp but you have continuous healing going the enemy's going to move first and if the enemy like because the enemy moves first like you're about to die before you even get continuous healing and it's not even a lot it's not even a lot of healing it's really low it's like abysmal amounts of healing and it's like it's already bad healing and then on top of that you have to take a turn to get it so like depending on your team and stuff like if your characters just aren't fast and even if they are if the enemy is in between you and getting your next turn you're just gonna take that hit and die like there's no like i don't know there's just no there's nothing you could do like and you're getting one instance of continuous healing my thing is lynx is good but gallagher's just better okay he's he's literally built different like the way you can sort of think about gallagher is he is mini luocha i think gallagher should be s tier 100 percent. either gallagher should be s tier or everybody f below like links and below need to slide down which i don't think is fair i don't think march is d tier neither is natasha so i would say like everyone here needs to come down a tier one right here Japard and them go down to c or like at least let links b and b with them something because gallagher gallagher is a whole different type of type of nasty he's a new type of nice he like the thing about gallagher is especially if you start the fight with gallagher's attack it puts beside it on all enemies right so not like gallagher goes into the fight getting additional energy from starting the fight himself all the enemies have beside it so regardless of if they go first or if you go first three turns of healing for just hitting those enemies so teams like acheron whose skill hits three enemies that's three instances of 1k healing you're literally you don't have to change your rotation at all you're getting three instances of 1k that's a full heal just for using your skill you hit one enemy you get 1k so you're that's much more significant than like 150 continuous healing from links only when you get a turn like you're getting full healed every time you hit these enemies and now since gallagher started at 50 maybe like 60 like one or two turns after that he's got his burst ready and you don't even have to use it you can just sit on it because you got an extra couple of turns left of 
besotted state on the enemies before you need to use it again. Like, Gallagher made Sam look like a joke. Lynx, I, I ran that MOC 12 so many times with Lynx and nothing changed. I changed my rotation. I changed my builds. I like, I got fast Lynx, slow Lynx, like nothing matters. I tried HP instead of healing bonus. Nothing mattered. Lynx could not get us through there. Gallagher? Bro, I run MOC 12 for fun now because of Gallagher. He is different. Especially if you're using Acheron, do not be afraid to level Gallagher because he is nasty. He's a new type of nice. That boy, yeah, brother, is built different. Like, and then the advancing 100% is so clutch, bro. Because, like, not only he uses his burst, he applies Basada to everyone. Gallagher himself, he also heals off the Basada attack. So, like, that's a full heal. Like, he doesn't die. He's got infinite effect res. Like, my Gallagher has, um, he's got, like, the light cone. Where is it, bro? He's got the Luocha light cone. The, um, I use this on Lynx. So, this increases his effect res to 24. Increases the, his outgoing healing by an amount that's equal to 39% of his effect res, right? So, it's like... Just this card alone and this amount of effect res ain't really that crazy. But I'm pretty sure his E1 trace increases his effect res by 50%, bro. That light cone is maxed out. Like. Like that light cone is maxed out. And Gallagher himself does not get freaking CC'd for nothing like i i think they might have made a mistake bro i'm not gonna lie to you i think when it comes to gallagher brother might be overtuned um so like i have i have 60 effect res when i go into a game i've got 110 effect res like he don't get cc for shit he like and then the more enemies that are on the field, the bigger the heals are. The more characters on a team that do AOE attacks, the bigger the heals are. Gallagher also heals the whole team with his enhanced basic. It's just, it's so much better than Lynx that it's like, he's creeping up on like five star territory. Like I wouldn't, if I didn't know any better, bruh, they, they have to nerf this man for real, for real. Because, like, Luocha finna be out of a job. What's Luocha here for? Like, before Gallagher, I was actually kind of upset. Because, um, I was like, damn, bro. Like, um, the healers in this game just aren't, like, they're just not it. The healers in this game just aren't, like, just up to it, bro. Like, Lynx, like, with the flaws that I pointed out, like, Lynx is kind of like, damn. And then, like, Fu Xuan in AoE content, like, if there's content where, like, you're constantly, the whole team's getting nuked, Fu Xuan, she just dies, bro. She just folds, like, origami, bro. Like, it, it's bad. It, uh, Fu Xuan enjoyers know. AoE content, she just gets bodied, bro. Folded like a lawn chair. And I'm like, for a moment there, I was I was feeling bad because I was like, bro, I'm going to have to pull Ho-Ho. I'm going to have to pull Luocha, something adventuring bro i was bro bro when i tell you man i was considering pulling adventuring that's a that's a new type of low bro like me i don't pull characters unless it's like unless they're like the the creme de la creme as as my boy ninja would say and it's like i was about to pull adventuring bro because the game was just beating me up beating me down like MOC 12 was looking really unattainable before Gallagher came through. Freaking what he be saying, bro. Uh, indulge yourself. <laughs> bro, I love it, bro. I love Gallagher. He should definitely be S tier. Uh, Pride win, Mr. Poke, whoever. Gallagher S tier, please. I I would love to see that. But um, every, yeah, everyone else, um, I think... 
these characters like the ones in a tier and below these are like very niche picks it's like a like a play if you want to i do have clara um i've got like a pretty like troll like clara build and it does the job most times but like all of those characters are very niche and i think that's why they end up at the bottom clara doesn't work if like like she's she's unique in the sense that like clara wants the enemies to hit her right which means that you can't break the enemies because if you break them then they stop attacking for however many turns and then clara's not generating energy she's not follow up attacking she's not dealing damage and then you don't clear like it's weird how that like clara is kind of flawed in a way I, I love her but um she's kind of flawed in a way when you really like think about it because like if you run if it's like um the recent uh moc or pure fiction i think was ice yeah i think it was ice uh weakness and pella is a good support for clara ron may is a good support and um you know just between the two of them pella and ron may they were breaking everyone and leaving them broken the entire fight and because of that no one was attacking clara and it just clara never got to do anything it's just like breaking the enemy works so much against clara in a game designed around breaking enemies that it's like it's kind of it's kind of a joke they kind of violated clara in a way i can't speak too much about blade um I'm, i know he was impressive people used to like mess with him heavy when he came out but i i've been seeing like the blade support kind of fall off especially when like dot is just so much like if you're looking for wind right like you just get black swan kafka i mean you kind of don't need blade no more you know like it, it's like why pull blade when black swan kafka exists or like black swan by herself like like why pull blade you know it, it don't really make much sense um argenti is interesting that he went down because okay at least they have him s s tier in pure fiction this must be yeah this is memory of chaos so in pure fiction he's s tier because that uh physical aoe or erudition whatever the hell yeah crazy that that goes crazy i needed that i was i was really like damn i need me an argenti but um i can definitely see an moc not that good everyone else yeah very niche characters down here and it only gets worse at the bottom it's like these characters do such like laughable damage when it comes to like killing enemies with like multiple hundreds of thousands of hp it's like dan hung is not when done hung not doing nothing bro like mika you're not doing nothing my boy loves hook and he be trying to like he be trying to make hook succeed bro he be trying his heart out i'm just like you know if he's gonna get it i'm gonna be there i'm gonna be there rooting for him but like nah, they they did a lot of these um i don't think hoyo cares too much about four star dps's they all kind of fall in the same area of like being very niche and like not doing enough to like justify it, you know? Because you're gonna get it, it. It's not even pay to win because you're gonna get primos over time, right? And pretty much anything that you could spend your primos on DPS wise is better than like every four star DPS that we have. So it's like. You might as well just drop some primos and get a topaz or zila or something it, it'll be better than daniel even zila's shitty ass and better than wind daniel and like himiko they don't even have like a place in the game outside of pure fiction heard uh yeah i agree with most of that stuff down there but these up here kind of made me feel a certain way 
I know this video is kind of long, but I just wanted to get my thoughts out there. Um, if you made it to the end, though, I do appreciate it. It's getting kind of late. I'm getting kind of tired. I got uh, I got some cleaning to do and stuff. So, yeah, I'll be uh, I'll see you all in the next video, man. Deuce.